Yeah, I'm standing completely different. We'll get back to it, don't worry. So, now this is the, this is the, the rough and tumble helium part of the, of the shell. Uh, this is the particle. We've been talking about waves. Now this is the particle. And we're going to pulverize it. <laughs> I love that graphic. Oh, what happens when we pulverize a particle? Well, we get a lot of little smaller particles, right? And now we take one of those smaller particles and we... Oh, come on. We pulverize it. And what? Even smaller particles. Well, I won't keep this up forever. Uh, if I take one of those little smaller particles and I pulverize it, what am I going to get? Hmm? See, eventually I'll get atoms. It has been an intellectual exercise for, for many uh, millennia, and as it usually is, the, the knowledge that we get comes from the ancient, ancient Greek. And they've just done this as a thought exercise. And they said, well, you take something and you pound it, and then you get something smaller, you pound it, you get something smaller, you pound it, uh, you cut it in half, now i got two of them, but they're smaller, cut that in half, now i got two of them, but they're smaller. How far can we go? And it was just an intellectual exercise. How far can we go? Can we? There's two possibilities. One is it can go on forever, and the other is that at some point you get to something that cannot be cut in half. It's the smallest unit. And this uh, was not actually completely, uh, all scientists signed off on it until the early uh, 1900s. But um, if I ask everybody in this room, what do we end up with at the smallest level? I could probably get two or three answers. Uh, let's see what the answers. I heard Adam. Hmm? What? That's what I was looking for. Molecules, they are the, what we think of and what we know from science class are the smallest components of, uh, of all matter. And, um, here's a picture. Don't take the picture very seriously, folks. Um, but in terms of particles, we have protons and neutrons in the middle, and we have electrons spinning around the edges. Uh, as I say, do not take do not take this model very seriously. This, this model was discarded in 1916, maybe 12. Uh, nobody has believed that this this is a, a picture of an atom since 1912. Sometimes we still learn it in school. Um, okay, and as we heard over there, if you get even smaller, the current theory has it. Uh, and there's been some, recently some evidence of this, that um, a photon, you, if you look inside a photon, you see three particles, they're quarks. And if you look inside uh, a neutron, there's three particles, and they're quarks, and there's various combinations of quarks that make up uh, the different particles. Electrons, on the other hand, are still pretty much thought to be elementary particles in themselves, not made up of quarks. They're like on the same level of quarks. Um, so that's what happens when it's smaller, and this is where it stops for now. The standard model of uh, particle physics stops at quarks. Uh, but if we go larger, we can add all the atoms together, and we've got a picture of a water molecule over there. This is a coffee molecule. Don't mean to keep you up. Uh, this is carbon-60, which is also known as a buckyball, or a Buckminster fullerene. It is 60 carbon atoms that are cabled together like a soccer ball. Or, it reminds many people of the geodesic dome, which Buckminster Fuller is very famous for. It's a great big molecule, 60 atoms in one molecule. And it looks really cool, too. Uh, if we get even larger, uh, we can go up to larger things made of particles. Uh, my favorite example being toaster ovens. Why, you ask? I don't know. Uh, I just love them. They're really extremely convenient. You can do almost anything. You can toast things in it. You can actually bake a chicken inside one of them. Um, so these are things that we think of as particles, right? And or the collections of particles. You know, cobble them together. And anyway, they're they're particles. You can hold them in your hand. You can weigh them. Uh, you can take their temperature. You can uh, rock them in your arm. Uh, particles are things that we can understand. Particles are things. You know, energy. Uh, I don't know. It's like so you walk outside, it's there because you can feel warm when the sun strikes you. So it's not nothing. 
Uh, but you can't hold it in your hand. Uh, you, you can't, you know, coddle it. Uh, but a part of it you can. And a coaster of it. Even a coaster of it you can do that. Uh, these are the particles. Cool, huh? Now let's test particles. What can we do to test particles? I've mentioned a couple of things you can do to test the particle. Uh, remember I said you could uh, weigh it. What else can you do for particles? Who remembers? I said take temperature, huh? See it? Uh, so we'll say you can locate it in space. As you see it, you're locating it where it is. Um, also, you can judge its color. Um, you, can, you can do all those kinds of things with particles. Well, as soon as the scientists uh, came up with actually being able to isolate things like an electron, a proton, a neutron, they can actually work with individual things like that. And they go, well, let's start testing them. Uh, and one of the things they could do to test it uh, was send it to a double-slit experiment. 